Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Sound VFX. I have an interesting lesson for you guys today. We will look at post-processing your renders in Photoshop. Let's take a dull, boring render and turn it into a strikingly beautiful image that immediately grabs viewers' attention. We will take this image here and turn this into a beautiful, glowy render like this. Even though I'm showing you how to do this in Photoshop, you should easily be able to apply all these techniques you learned today into other software like After Effects or Fusion or Nuke. If you use any other software than Photoshop, let me know in the comment section below what software you like to do your post-processing in. Before I start today, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. All right, let's get started. Now, before you start post-processing, few things to keep in mind is uh, key to a good post-processing is make sure you render your image as flat as possible. You don't want any blown out spot like super bright spot or super dark stuff. You wanna make sure you have enough dynamic range on your image so that you can push that up in your post-processing. You also need to decide on your color palette. Now, for that, you need to understand the color theory. I'm not gonna go deep into color theory because there are a lot of other vi videos out there that go really deep on color theory. But in our case, I'm trying to achieve a color scheme called analog colors. So if you open Adobe Color Wheel, you can select various different um, color schemes here. The first one is analogs. And if you actually place your these things around uh, blue, as you can see, the color goes from blue to purple, to pink. Now, these colors are visually striking, okay? When you have an image that uses these color palettes, they are visually striking, which is what we're trying to aim on our renders. At the moment, we only have a very dull blue color and a little bit of pink. So we're gonna we are going to emphasize on those colors. The first thing I always do is create a group and I'll name it Render Passes and I'll just drag this one into that. Now I can't drag that because this layer is locked, so I'll double click it to unlock this and I'll just drag it there. Now, the first thing I always do is bring out all the passes I saved out and just put it on top of my image and set the blending mode to screen. What it does is it just doubles up the effect of reflection, my light, and it just gives a little bit of that pop to the image. So let's do that with the reflection pass first bring it in and change the blending mode to screen. As you can see, it just brings extra pop to our reflection pass there. I'll bring the refraction next. Do the same thing with this, turn it into screen. Next, I'll add my environment light pass. and change it to screen. And we can turn it on and off to see what it's doing. If the effect is too strong, you can always dial it down with the opacity. But I think for, so far it's pretty good. I'll bring my sunlight pass as well. Okay, do the same thing. Make sure, check the effect, how strong it is. If it's too strong, dial it down. If it's not strong enough, you can always make another copy by hitting Ctrl and J to make the effect more strong. In our case, I think um, just one is fine. Now I've got a last one last pass, which is the butterfly uh, lights. We just have the butterflies and I'll change that to screen. Now with this one, it is brightening up my background as well, which I don't really like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this to be only on these glass area. So instead of masking manually, I'm going to bring in a, a pass which has uh, all the masks. So I've got this pass here from where I can select just this green element here. And let's go back to my butterfly layer and I'll just create mask. Now that way you can see it's only affecting in the middle area. Now I think the effect is a little too strong, so I'll just go ahead and play with the opacity. Just tone it down a little bit, something around 50. Okay, next I've got my ambient occlusion pass. Just bring it in. Now this one is not set to screen. This one will set it to multiply. Now if I zoom in a little bit closer 
and I turn it off and turn it on, you can see it gives that extra detail on all the corners. Okay, now that I've done all the render passes, which is the basic one, the next step I do is fix any issue or error in the image. Basically, if I look at this image here, I've got these lines here, which I don't really like. Also, down here, I want this, sorry, I want this transition to be softer into the background. So I'm going to fix those errors next. We, you want to do this right after you put all the render passes so that you're not adding these uh, imperfections later on. So I'll create a new layer and I'll go to Clone Stamp Tool and we'll just zoom in here. I'm just going to pick up, pressing the Alt key, I'm just go going to pick up a sample from a clean area and I'll just paint over it. Just do it a couple of times. Do that. Okay. Now we've got this extra line here, which I want to get rid of as well. Also, I think um, that line is pretty visible. So I'll just pick the sample from the bottom here. Just paint it up a little bit. Pick another sample. Just paint this line as well. That's good. We'll do the same here for the bottom part. Just paint it over slightly. We don't have to get rid of them completely because it's a little bit of faded. Looks fine. Do the same thing on this side here. All right, let's do this one here now. Just hitting all to sample different areas. We'll create another group. We'll name this clone stamp and I'll drag this one in there. Now, as I explained earlier, we're trying to get that nice gradient of colors from blue to purple to pink. Um, we'll try to get that using our color balance. So I'll just go down here, add in a color balance. Now we're going to play with this. I'm just going to bring out a little more pink to it. Now, as you can already see, uh, we get much more pink um, on our render. We're getting a little bit of purple down here. I'll take this blue and bring it slightly up to yellow because um, I don't like this uh, really dark blue color here so that's why I'm trying to soften it so bring it up yellow I'm just going to turn up a little bit of red as well and give a little more boost to that pink okay now you can see we've got some nice um, purple shade here we've got nice uh, bright blue colors on our butterfly really saturated pink on our tree and our background's got some uh, dark blue tone. So we've got that uh, nice variation of color, nice gradient of color going on. Now the image is looking a little bit too saturated for my liking. So I'm going to add a hue and saturation and I'll tone down the saturation a little bit. Now you can see it will just make our image black and white. So I don't want to do it too much, maybe minus 10. Let's see how it looks. I think that looks good. Okay, let's add a little bit of sharpness to our image. Um, I'm going to merge all these layers, all these um, layers into one layer. So the way to do that would be by using a hotkey, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now this will basically merge everything and give you a new layer, which is the final layer. And I'll convert this to Smart Object. Now, in order to create that uh, sharpness, instead of using a filter called uh, Sharpen, uh, we'll just use this little trick. Uh, so go to Filter, Other, High Pass Filter. I'll set the pixels to, seems fine for this one. So hit OK. And I'll change the blending mode to Overlay. Now, if I zoom in here, you'll see the difference. If I turn it off and on, you can see it adds a lot of sharpness to the image. Okay, next step, I'm going to add a little bit of glow. Now I'll repeat the same process. I'll do Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I just made a copy of this layer. 
I'll turn this into the smart object as well. And I'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now I'm going to blur this image a fair bit, probably around 18. Now that's fine if this amount is not perfect, we can always tweak it later because we converted this to smart object. So if you want to um, adjust the Gaussian blur, you can just double click on this Gaussian blur and just tweak it. We'll just put it at 18. Okay, now I'll change this blending mode to screen and I'll reduce the opacity down to about 50. You can already see it's adding a lot of atmosphere to our render and it's giving that little bit of that glow to our render. Now, after doing this, I kind of feel like it's uh, washing out my image a little bit and I want a bit more of that pink to go around uh, in the surroundings and tie this image together. So I'll just create a new layer and I'll go into my uh, color and I'll just pick up a pink color from the scene, something a little bit darker, something like that. Okay, and I will hit Alt Backspace to fill up that layer with that color. And now I can change this color, sorry, this layer to be a blending mode as overlay. Now this looks overkill now, but we'll just turn it down using the opacity slider, set it down to about 20. Now this will just add that extra kick of the colors uh, in our render and it just ties everything together perfectly. As a final steps of grading, I take all this into Camera Raw Filter and make some adjustments there. So I'll repeat the process once again, Control Alt Shift E to collapse everything into one layer and I'll convert that to a smart object. And let's go up into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now here I'll make a little bit of adjustments here and there to take this image from looking nice to looking really good. Okay, I'm just going to take the temperature and push it up to yellow a little bit to give it that nice um, glow. So if I push it to blue, it'll, it starts turning our image to really cool and just starts becoming too saturated. So I'm just trying to counteract it with a little bit of warmth in it. I will increase the exposure a little bit. Uh, probably not, no, not exposure. I think it's already bright enough. I'll just add a little bit of contrast to it. Increase up the highlights. Boost up these bright parts here. As you can see, if I increase the hi highlight, just increase up those bright parts. And I'll reduce the shadow to get these foregrounds and the background a bit darker. Now, this clarity slider is really interesting. Uh, if you increase it up, you can see it adds so much detail to our image, right? So if you want to add detail in your renders, this slider is really good, but don't overdo it. It can really make your image look dirty. Um, but in our case, we're trying to get a nice, soft, uh, dreamy look. So we're going to set this value to negative and it'll really create that nice glow uh, effect, as you can see here. We don't want to overdo it though. Something around minus 45. This seems to work fine. Now you can already see the image looks really nice and dreamy. Now I'll tone down the saturation a little bit. I think with all these corrections, it's looking too colorful. So I'll just push the colors down a little bit up to like probably minus eight, something like that. Now one last, last step. I'll add some vignette. So if you go to effects tab, you can just add in some vignetting, which is basically just um, black frame around the image. Normally the cameras always has a little bit of vignetting just so that it can frame uh, your image better. So I'll just set this to negative 15 and let's check before and after. You can see we did a lot here and our image looks really good now. All right, hit OK. As a last step, I'm going to add in some 
effects on top of this image. So I've got this image I found on internet. I just went to Google and searched for some dust particles and I just got this image. So I'll just put this one on top here where our light is coming down. I'm just going to scale it up. That enter and I'll just set the blending mode to screen and set the opacity down. I don't want too much. Just adding some little bit of that atmospheric dust kind of effect. Let's scale that up. Control T to get a transform. And that is all. All right, that's it guys. I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let me know in the comment section what do you guys think. If you have some renders that you did post-processing on after watching this video, make sure to send it to me so I can have a look and I will be happy to give some feedback. See you guys next time. Bye.